Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Two movie thoughts. The blood pack has entirely too many members. I think it's like eight. I keep forgetting that the black guy is even in this movie. You know, the one who isn't Wesley Snipes. And I'm not saying that as any kind of like racist thing. I just, it wouldn't matter what ethnicity he was. His character is so bland. He has like three lines of dialogue. Well, outside of, you know, explaining why he and Nyssa broke into, or was, were let into, you know, the compound of Blade. Him, there's the hillbilly-ish dude, you know, there's the swordsman who I believe is also the movie and the first one's choreographer, fight choreographer, and the dude, priest I think he's called. They could have been one or maybe two characters. They didn't need to be four different characters. Okay, the couple who have this sort of tragic ending, definitely keep them because they have this sort of tragic ending and you know whether or not you like the whole no no I'm not at all you know I haven't been turned by the creature that's supposed to be turning you know that's such a cliche but you know if you like the cliche you'll like it in this movie if you don't like the cliche like I do don't yeah I don't like the cliche if you don't either you're not gonna like it in this movie either you know it's like yeah no no please please don't check here where he would obviously bite me you know it's just, yeah. I like that there's that sort of pause, you know, she, he says her name, there's sort of, are you still in there, is that still you? And then, you know, he gets the weapon away from her because she hesitates, she trusts that this is still the man, the vampire, vampire that she used to love, and, you know, off with the, you know, lid for the sewer, and the manhole cover, and, you know, toast. And, you know, Reinhardt, obviously, because he's a badass, you know, he's the vampire version of Blade, almost. He's just, and, you know, the movie does well with that, you know. On that, the whole badass thing, I personally think that when the first movie of a franchise really establishes a character as a total and utter badass, the second movie really should have some fun with that, have some self-irony over it. You know, Terminator 2 does a really good job of this. This movie doesn't really do that all that much. He's still just a badass, and sometimes it comes off as comical, because you're just still watching this guy who's behaving in about the same way as the first time, you know, so, yeah. Whistler, retconned back to life. Resurretconned. I can't stand it. If you're gonna do that, at least properly explain why. Oh, I, I got the line, you know, the subtitle line of, oh, he shot himself, then he turned into a vampire. <laughs> yeah, no, I call BS on that. He shot himself most likely in the head. We don't see it, but it was most likely in the head. He's Whistler. He knows how to handle a gun. He knows what he's about to turn into. He would have shot himself. Blade might have also checked. That would certainly have made sense for him to check because he knows that the one thing Whistler doesn't want happening to him is for him to turn into a vampire. Then we have... The bullet is most likely silver. It's Blade's gun. Those are silver bullets. Why didn't that, you know, okay, did the silver leave his system before he turned into a vampire, even if he did survive the most likely headshot? I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. They even show the clips reminding us exactly how it looked. It's like they're saying, hey, you still buy it? You still buy it? Can we really make you believe this? And other than that, it's just so obvious they just, they needed him back. They were dealt a bad hand. I get that. But... Again, just properly explain it. You know, they needed the character of Whistler because he brings out the humanity in Blade. What there is of humanity in Blade. And it would have taken far too long to introduce a new character with all the other stuff that goes on in this movie. Of course. The... The club. I like that it's the sort of s &M club and that since they're vampires, and they, you know, they want to feel things extremely much, so they, 
you know, there's that one who's being carved open, you know, her back carved open and her spine, you know, there are the, there's a couple kissing with razor blades in their mouths, you know, on their tongues. That's, yeah, that's really well done. The, the film does, you know, it's creative. I like that. I, and the design of the Reapers, you know, I like that he did, you know, Guillermo del Toro did kind of try to make vampires nasty again. You know, he takes away from, you know, the oral and the penetration, this kind of seduction of the vampire, and he just makes vampires nasty, evil, disgusting creatures again. You know, he even cuts one up just to see, <laughs> see, can you really be attracted to this? You know, it's very, yeah. One thing. Priest alludes to being a pure blood, and he's like, you know, why don't we kill these guys? They're n most of them aren't even pure bloods. Why don't we kill all of them? And then at the end, Reinhardt says that his father killed his mother. Does is he a pure blood then, or was he just infected? How do pure bloods even? Is it like two pure bloods have sex and then? The child is a pure blood, or does just one of the parents have to be a vampire? And could an infected give birth to a pure blood? If you have sex with a vampire, is their body actually that cold? You know, apparently they are dead. They have extremely low body temperature. We find that out in both this movie and the first one. Are they actually that cold? Because that would just be nasty. The fight at the end. I don't know, I guess it's just there for the wrestling fans. That's fine, you know, the movie isn't really tailor-made for my personal taste, and that's fine. I'm not the main, I'm not the target audience here. But why is the fight there at all if Nomak has gotten his revenge and kind of just wants to die? Because, you know, there at the end he stabs himself. Why? You know, the knife is already there, but he could pull it out. No, instead he just stabs himself the rest of the way, and that's apparently what kills him. Maybe he could have survived if he hadn't already been stabbed, you know. I don't know. The... The character of Scud, I personally think he's okay. I don't think he really excuse me, needed to turn out to be a bad guy, but, you know, I get it. It's, you know, that sort of, you know, there there are sort of hints at it, signs of it, but, you know, and then he, did, and then, you know, Whistler's like, oh, I was just starting to like him. The, the movie does definitely have some good dialogue among the not-so-good dialogue. The... So, Luke Goss, I think it is, minor spoilers for the beginning of Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, but is Luke Goss trying to corner the market on playing pale princes in the second installments to franchises directed by Guillermo del Toro, where the character kills his father? I just... It's, it's baffling how much the two look alike. I mean, is it in his contract by now? Like, when he, you know, gets the call from his agent and is told, Oh, it's Guillermo del Toro. He knows that I want to play this particular role, right? I, I don't know. It, yeah. The... The whole genetic creation thing... I get, you know, wanting to conquer the few weaknesses that the vampires do have, but why would you start on your son? That just doesn't make a lot of sense. I get that he's, you know, evil, bad guy, really, really old guy who bleeds blackish, darkish blood and, you know, his face cracks like a porcelain doll when he dies, but why start with your son? I mean... I get, you know, once you've perfected it, okay, maybe make your son, you know, your heir, the 
you know, one of the guys who will take over. But why start with him? Why experiment on him? Did you really not think it would, might come back and bite you on your ass? I mean, it just... I don't know. what If this guy is... You know, they, they say that, you know, old people are really wise. If this guy is as ancient as he appears to be, shouldn't he be, like, really, really smart and never even consider doing something that obviously stupid? Is it just, you know, because they really wanted this sort of Shakespearean undertone to the ending? You know, oh, you die by the hands of your children. Only because you just locked us in here. And... Because I was stupid enough to experiment on my son. I don't know, were they also, you know, with Whistler blowing apart some of the fetuses, were they also kind of commenting on, you know, this idea of, you know, experimenting on life, making it, you know, changing it without, you know, trying to fiddle with evolution, because I guess, yeah, that is a theme for Del Toro, you know, also with Mimic. And what is with Blades... He keeps referring to Reinhardt as... Correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't he calling him a neo-Nazi, basically? He calls him Adolf, he calls him Fritz. Is he just saying, <laughs> you're German? I mean, it's gotta be like a neo-Nazi thing, but... Based on what? Based on the fact that he said, you know, can you blush? I don't even quite understand what... The, I guess because his skin is black, so... Someone who doesn't have black skin wouldn't think that... Someone with black skin would blush? I don't know. The... I think part of what also bothers me about Whistler being in this movie still, even though he's died, he keeps just being, you know, I mean, in the sewers, for example, he's there for us to worry about, you know, when he gets, like, you know, Reinhardt and the hillbilly dude, they, you know, start beating him up, uh, we lose a partner, or Blade loses a partner. Yeah, the guy barely had a name or a character. We barely noticed that he was gone, you know. And then, you know, it's, we're just supposed to worry about Whistler, you know, because he's one of the good guys, and that's it. And then, you know, earlier he's gone, and it's like, ooh, has he actually turned? Of course he hasn't. He's not still a vampire. It's just, I don't know, I, I don't think I ever bought it. And it just seems like a really cheap way of trying to stir up some scares, some tension, you know. Because after that point, we never think, oh, might he still be a vampire, you know, or at least, I don't know, maybe it's because I've watched it at least half a dozen times, but I don't recall thinking of him as possibly still being a vampire after that scene, you know. It's just, it's it's a tease, you know, it's like not a complete plot element that, you know, sort of got left back in there, you know. Also just... Why is it that Nomak and Blade fight? I guess Nomak just fights back, sort of, because Blade does want to fight him, but if Nomak had just said, look, I don't want to kill humans, I just want to kill... What does he think? What does Nomak think Blade wants from him? Doesn't he kind of realize, you know... Or why doesn't Blade just say it? It's just, it's one of those stupid misunderstandings where the movie could have been half as long if it just said, you know, hey, how about I just kill some vampires? I just want to get revenge, you know, this, this guy really screwed me over, you know, he's kind of a jerk. Then I will just, you know, kill myself a seppuku myself. You know, don't worry, I just, I've read the script, that's how I'm going to end up anyway. And you just let me do my thing, and Blade would just be, oh, yeah, cool, that you know, save me some trouble. Well, you know, see you in the next movie. Well, I won't see you, but I don't know. It just, you know, in the first one, there was conflict. There was proper conflict between the lead and the antagonist. And here, it's just kind of, hey, I'm the antagonist. Oh, am I fighting you? I guess I'm fighting you because I'm the lead. I don't know. It also, I mean... The whole genetic mutation, 
genetic experimentation thing, creating a stronger breed of vampires that vampires then have to fight. It's almost like Blade didn't need to be in this movie. It could have just been vampires fighting super vampires, and that would have been it. You know, it's. I do think that it's bloated, that there are too many plot elements, that it's just too... Nyssa kind of making Blade more sympathetic to the vampires. I do think that works, you know, and she does wind up being a truly sympathetic character. That is a good element, even though it, again, is not entirely developed, I don't think. I don't see why he really falls for her, you know. I don't know, I guess, you know, he just really is impressed by her stating that, you know, she's accepted who she is and he hasn't. I don't know. Okay, she she has a strong character and she's a fighter. We can respect that, but I don't I don't see falling for her. If that's what he... I don't know if he loves her, but he certainly cares about her, you know. He doesn't want her to be blown up by UV flashbangs, you know, that's something at least. That's that's a Hallmark card right there. I don't want to see you get blown up by UV flashbangs. The UV flashbangs are pretty awesome. The, the whole idea and, you know, gotta love that Reinhardt cold bastard that he is waits until the last moment. Hey Blade, did I mention that the detonator is stuck, that the handle on the dead or whatever, you know, just, yeah. I like the ticking clock of the Reapers, kind of, you know, these have to suck blood every so, you know, what is it, every couple of hours, or they start feeding on themselves, so they have to do it really often, they, they're gonna spread like wildfire, you know. Also never entirely figured out, okay, so there are some there in the sewers, and at the very end he kills Nomak. Is that all of them? I mean, what if some of them just, I don't know, were in another part of the sewers? What if a couple of them were still hiding? It's just like, you know, at the end of the movie, it doesn't have to be all gone, you know? They don't, they might still be out there, wouldn't he still need some help finding them or some, I don't know, it just, how can he be, how can they be sure that they're actually gone? You know, it's at least a line in there, you know, no, we've scanned the entire area with something or other, something we just made up at this very moment, there are no more Reapers, only Nomak is still left out there, you know, and I guess he was told, he was given directions by Whistler or he was given a transmitter or something, or receiver, whatever, letting him know, you know, this is where you go for your revenge, you know. The... And his revenge, you know, the whole idea of him getting revenge over that, you know, that's also a cool enough. And I get that he's sort of a tragic figure because he just wants his revenge. I, just, I think that could have worked better. I generally don't think that Del Toro does that good of a job with these tragic villains. I don't know, maybe it's me. It might just be a personal bias or personal preference kind of thing. It just, they don't work for me, you know. And I like the guy, I like his films. I like his directing style, you know. Just, when he goes for that, you know, when he goes for the truly evil villains, that works, you know. Also, the nightclub, how did they figure out, you know, why did they choose there to, maybe it's a line in there, maybe I missed it on this viewing and forgot it from earlier viewings, but do they actually explain why they go to that specific location, you know, is it like, okay, we have, you know, we've established this kind of, it's in this general area that they seem to be attacking, so, you know, let's, check out this nightclub. Why would they go to a nightclub anyway? I'm not entirely sure I quite... F okay, there, there are a lot of vampires there, I get that, but... Again, just that specific one and not checking any other, because the entire Blood Pack and Blade's team go there and only there, you know. 
And why are none of these people bothered in the slightest by all these guys carrying guns? Okay, I get that maybe they can tell that most of them are vampires. But here's the thing, one of them's Blade. I get that this is, you know, a new city, and maybe they're not uber familiar with who Blade is and what exactly he looks like, because he's not wearing a disguise, and he never really does. He's a pretty obvious little, you know, when you see him, you know who that is, if you know who Blade is at all. If I were a member of a species who had really mainly just one thing to worry about, one thing to truly fear, to dread, who's really good at wiping my kind out. I would memorize what they look like. I would kind of freak out if I saw them in my general vicinity brandishing guns. I'd at least, you know, just... Isn't that Blade? Doesn't he usually kill us? Should we run? I get that these are S&M types, but I don't think they have that much of a death wish still, you know. Just have the one line. Have a vampire say, hey, isn't that the guy who used to kill us? Have a blood pack member respond, yeah, but we're working with him for the moment. We'll kill him later. You know, that, but no, nobody notices all the, you know, once the guns start firing, that's when people notice. You know, that's at least something that, you know, they don't just keep dancing. And I guess, you know, maybe they thought that dance clubs were oblig vampire dance clubs were obligatory for this franchise at this point. I don't know. When Nissa is, like, checking out, you know, doing an autopsy on the Reaper that they found, you know, the security guard from the blood bank, isn't she just kind of pulling all the stuff out of, her, out of thin air? or her derriere, isn't everything she says basically just a guess? I mean, she's right, I guess, it seems, but where is she getting this information from? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but she, didn't she just only now cut this thing open? How does she know so much about it already, you know? Oh, squeeze that tooth. There's definitely something in that tooth. <laughs> it's neurotoxin. I believe I can... To, what? You, you smelled it and that's it? You know, you just, you know exactly what, and, you know, the, but yeah, in general, just all of it, it seems like guesswork, but apparently she's right about it, you know, it just, yeah, couldn't they have just cut that together so that it was like, you know, okay, I've done an autopsy on this dude, and now look what I've found. You know, some kind of, instead of for just, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.